Let's get down, let's get down to business. Hello everybody, Jeremy Torsk here, and it is time to get down to business. We are in the Done Better Studios here in wonderful Pompano Beach, Florida. Sunny and 75 outside, I don't know where you are today, but here we are in great shape. It's been a rocky week with the weather, but finally we've come through the other side and we are doing wonderful. Today is Top 10 Thursday, where we're going to be talking about the top 10 ways to go from employee to uh, entrepreneur. So I just want to check uh, real quick, make sure that we are online. It looks like we are. I've got a brand new system. We started it yesterday. We're going to see if it's working again today. I liked what we saw yesterday. So uh, today we are here, got a new look here to the set. I told you we're kind of building this set as we go. Uh, but this is the new iteration. We've got some new soundproofing we just put up, so it should be sounding pretty good. We've got the desk behind us with the books over here, and then you can kind of see where camera two is set up, where you can see over, uh, over the shoulder here what that looks like. And uh, then we've got the smart board up with the coaching done better logo behind us. So we, uh, we are happy to be here, happy to be uh, coming to you live every Monday through Friday. And today is top 10 Thursdays where we talk about 10 ways to build your mind, body, your business. And today we're talking about going from entrepreneur uh, to entrepreneur from employee, which is maybe in the in store for you for 2024. Maybe you just did it this year. Um, Becca Metcalf, Ma, mother, I call her, Merry Christmas uh, to Bird, that's me, affectionately, uh, Bird, my whole life, now you guys know something else about me, but uh, yes, we're live, and she's watching us on YouTube right now, so at least we know the YouTube's working, so let's get down to business, and let's get right into this uh, Top 10 Thursday, uh, without further ado, we are going to try this for the first time, bam, We've got a split screen going on. So we are going to talk about transitioning from an employee to an entrepreneur. And it's, it's a significant career shift, and it's also a significant life shift. Uh, but here are top 10 uh, signs or steps to guide you through the process. Actually, hold on. Before I do that, I've got to open up a Zoom really quickly here. Let me move this Zoom over here because I forgot. I've got this link now, and this is how I'm going to bring people on here. We're going to open this Zoom up. Bam, bang, boom. Move this over here, and there we go. So if somebody is popping on Zoom and wants to come on, there is a link in the body of the, uh, of the, uh, the social media stuff that tells you where you can jump on this link. And if you do that, you can come on live here. Oh boy, this is going to get fun. I need a producer. I'm still in the market. If you're a producer, if you're, if you're an intern, I cannot pay you. But if you want to come in here a couple days a week and learn how to produce podcasts, learn how to produce video, audio, learn about editing, I will be glad to teach you everything I know to give you some real time. Uh, but uh, so my wife, Christy, hello. She's watching you. Hold on a second. I, first, I owe uh, Becky, my mother. Hello. Welcome. Thank, welcome to the show. Uh, Christy's watching. Remember that we want you guys to follow us, like us, and please subscribe to the channels or wherever you see us. It's really, really important to do that for all that algorithm stuff. So definitely want to, um, want to, want to, want to get that uh, down here. And... You know, as I keep opening his stuff, we, we might have a, a, a lag or two going on. So just let me know how that's, how that's looking, how we're sounding. But again, let's get into it. I've got my YouTube here where I can, or I got my, my um, Zoom here where I can see if somebody wants to come on live and have a discussion about what we're talking about. And I've got my notes here for the discussion of transforming an employee to entrepreneur. And so we're going to do top 10. Let's get into it. Let's go. What is number 10 for in transitioning from employee to entrepreneur is number 10. You've got to define your entrepreneurial vision, identify your passion, skills, interests, determine what kind of business you want to start. And most importantly, what kind of problem you want to solve. You know, probably one of the biggest things that people have the hard time hardest time 
articulating is what problem am I going to solve and what are the results that you're going to experience after we solve this problem? What problems do my clients have and don't want? And do I have the answers they want and don't have? When you have those parts and you can articulate exactly how to get those things across, you are going to be hockey sticking in your production and your success and getting your um, engagement through the roof. I started coaching done better. Dot com. Uh, I'm very crystal clear about who I want to serve. I want to serve the coaches who help people with their body, mind, and business. At the same time, I want to help the people who want to get better, 1% better every day in their mind, body, or business. Meet the coaches that can help them, world-class coaches. I wanted to make sure that they can actually see, feel, touch, and hear them before they paid them a dime. That was the biggest gap on the, on the member side is that they're paying all this money and not knowing whether or not this coach could really help them or not. And for the coaches, they weren't being seen. They were spending all this money on leads and prospects and, and how, to, how to go where people can find me. Well, we put together the process to put those two pieces together in a way that's unique in that what we do is allow the members to see your resources, your books, your PDFs, your videos, your live streaming, and you actually get to help people every day. At the same time, you're really building good, good grace and putting in social credit and getting footage of yourself where you can put it out there in, 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 on your social media platforms. And at the, at the very same time, you're going to have free coaching as a part of being on the platform for a very low monthly rate of $99 a month uh, because I go live every week on the platform to teach the coaches how to get better at your platforms, at meeting people, at articulating the problem you solve and how you're going to solve it and what the results are going to be. So there's a lot of things that I, that I saw that went into this platform that just wasn't available to people anywhere else. And on the member side, again, you get all of the coaches' video. You get to see their PDFs. You get to read their books if they want to. And some of it, you get they got to buy. A lot of it's for free. But a lot of the times, these coaches, uh, they're just not being heard or seen. And this gives them a unique ability. Also, you pay the $99, and I pay the freight. I'm the one that's paying all the money for the Google ads and the Facebook boosting and the uh, the, all of the, all of the pay-per-click stuff that we're going to be doing. I've partnered up with some people, 561 Media, uh, Michael Richards and Dan, uh, Dan, oh my Lord, his name just popped right out of my head. It starts with a G and it's Italian. Hold on. Dan's going to kill me. Oh, bam, bam. Dan Giordano. I didn't even have to look. It popped back in. Uh, so Dan Giordano, Michael Richards, we partnered up with 561 Media, Coaches, coaches, that Dan's been recruiting coaches for years, and Michael Richards has been doing paid serves for years, and, and done better, coaching done better has got together. Well, we're going to have an unbelievable offer, and I'm paying the freight on that for you. You're going to get all the members to view you because I'm going out to, rec to put all those lead magnets out. I'm doing that, uh, and my team is doing that. So it's a win-win-win situation, uh, not to mention some other things that would be have to be nuts not to – uh, join us. So that's the clarity. Okay. That's to determine what kind of business I want and start uh, figuring out how exactly to get the results that you need and don't have. And I, I've got that figured out, I believe, with some help with some really smart people. All right. Let's go on to number nine of how to become an employee to an entrepreneur. Number nine is research and validate your business idea. A lot of times people are very Ooh, let's call it uh, knee jerk or uh, they, they're reactive about, hey, I got an idea. I've been working for this company for a while and their customer service stinks. I could do it better. I could build a better model. I could do uh, this company would be nothing without me. Um, I could do it better. And then they leave. Well, it's probably a mistake. You probably shouldn't just leave right away. You probably should do some research and validate your business idea because what they're doing might be different than what you're going to do, and, and it might need to be different. Maybe that's the reason why they're not so successful or why, they're not, why they can't scale or why they're having uh, – why you're thinking as an employee that they're not doing a great job. Uh, there is a, a reason for that. So definitely uh, conduct market research to assess the demand of your product or service 
to validate your ideas by talking to potential customers and seeking feedback. I talked with Jeff Hoffman, who was on my Slight Edge Advantage podcast a few weeks ago, and uh, he told me pretty much that the words he said was, uh, think big, start slow. Think big, start slow. Really t- figuring out how to make complex problems simple is his gift, Jeff Hoffman. Jeff Hoffman created the advertising behind uh, Priceline.com, and he invented those kiosks that you see in the airport. And the guy started really the first Amazon website years and years ago. It wasn't Amazon, of course, but the idea of it was Jeff Hoffman's, but people weren't ready to give their credit card over the internet at that time. It just wasn't secure. And Jeff couldn't articulate how it would be secure. uh, And so that idea never got off the ground. So he says, go to where your clients are. When he wanted to start uh, a company somewhere, uh, it was in another country somewhere. He actually flew there and went there and sat in the dirt with the people uh, and got in the, got in the dirt, got his hands dirty with the clients that were going to use his product to find out, yes, they want your product. It's needed. There's a space for it. There's a price for it and that, that they need it. He actually went to where his clients were, uh, potential clients, before he started the company. So definitely, even though you are doing this, if you're an employee and you want to uh, start another business doing what you're doing, that's great. You've got a head start. But if you're doing something and you want to do something completely different, make sure that you understand who your ideal client is, who exactly is your client. And we talked about how to articulate the problem you're going to solve, but also to who. Who is it that needs that problem? I'm talking about on a micro level. If you don't understand that, it's probably got to... You got to stay with your company a little bit longer and get that information. Okay, let's move on. Number eight to going from an employee to an entrepreneur is develop your skills and knowledge. Consider taking courses, attending workshops, earning certificates related in entrepreneurship. Improve your skills in areas like marketing, finance, sales, and business uh, development. I cannot tell you how important this one is how important it is especially getting those skills like marketing finance sales and business development for something that you're doing let's say you're a master at whatever you are for my opinion or my example i was a fiber optic coax specialist you know operations guy for 20 years i I did cable installation lineman work fiber splicing management supervision ran large-scale pro- projects, contractor, in-house, worked for Comcast, and uh, had my own business, and just did so many things. But I was just really great at operations. I mean, super big dog. But when I started my own business, where I fell short was the part of marketing, finance, sales, and biz dev. I, I knew a lot of people, so maybe biz dev was okay, but I didn't understand money. I didn't understand selling. I didn't understand marketing. I didn't understand really creating great relationships or diversification. That's what hurt me the most when I left my job and started my own company in that market. Even though I was such a good operator, eventually when the market crashed in 2009, the housing market, I was left to to pivot. And because I only knew one thing, I was one dimensional. I was a monster at operations. I didn't understand marketing, finance, sales, biz dev, relationship building to to a certain extent. I couldn't pivot and I went bankrupt and I lost absolutely everything, everything I worked for. I'd gone from homelessness and starting digging ditches at 20. Now, almost 20 years later, I was owning my own business, flying high, making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but I lost everything, bankrupt, lost my house, lost my family, lost everything. Ended up in a call center, literally dialing for dollars, trying to sell Comcast phone uh, services and, and TV services. And the reason is I didn't understand all that other stuff. But because I humbled myself and I took that job in that uh, call center, shout out to sales uh uh, what was that? Um, gosh, the name of that company. Um, Jesus Christ. Saveology. Shout out to my Saveology listeners out there. Um, you know, thank you, Benny Abood, and thank you, uh, Reed Shapiro, and thank you, uh, Mike Aronowitz, and, and James. Jeez, uh, these are the mentors that, that helped me uh, learn about these sales things that um, 
James Flynn that helped me become better at sales and it helped me become better at marketing, especially Mike Aronowitz and James Flynn with marketing stuff uh, and, and finance and sales. Thank you, Vincent Salerno. Uh, thank you, Vincent Bieber. I mean, uh, Bieber, uh, Bieber, uh, Brett Bieber. Uh, so many of, of you have touched my life and that, that particular couple years learning those skills is what made it possible for me after three years there to go back to the industry that I was really good at, not as a entrepreneur, but as a, as an intrapreneur, I went into back to work as an employee, but now I, I was thinking like an owner cause I was an owner and I had all these new marketing and finance skills and business development skills, sales skills. And I took three different companies over my last 10 years from $2 million a year on average to over $60 million a year on average uh, for 10 years straight. And that's because I was just so much more well-rounded and forging relationships and selling, truly selling and marketing and business development, all this stuff, great stuff. So the biggest fall that I took helped me rise higher than I ever would have rose because I ended up selling one of those companies for like millions of dollars. We won't get specific, but millions of dollars, which helped me build the done better studios here in Pompano beach and pivot and start another business because I'm comfortable enough now starting another business because I know marketing and finance and business development and all these things that are so important for you to achieve what you need after you're not an employee anymore. You've got to be well-rounded. So let's move on to number eight, number seven, excuse me. Test, reiterate, test, iterate, and refine your product or services. So you might know the problem you're solving, okay? You may know exactly the problem you're solving, but you might not know exactly how in which, which way you're going to solve this problem. So this is where testing and, and refining your product or services is so important, especially if you're going from, let's say I work for a company and I'm going to go start my own company doing the same thing. Well, they're probably very large, they're scaled bigger, they've been in business longer. Which, what, what are you going to start with? You're a solopreneur, most likely. You're just going to start with one thing. So refine exactly which, what thing you're going to start off with doing first in your own business. And then you'll build from that as you grow your team, which is another whole thing. It might, may or may not be on this list is team building. Uh, but that's number seven. And uh, I wish I would have grabbed a bottle of water. I don't want to walk away from here and go get one. But... Uh, I am getting thirsty because we are doing so much stuff here today. It's really going to be a big day here. Top 10 ways to go from entrepreneur, from employee to entrepreneur. We're down to number six here. And it's a big one because it's going to be a while until A, you make money, and B, you, you may not, um, you may not, it may take a lot of money to invest. It may be a lot of investment that you need to buy things like marketing and equipment and uh, vehicles and insurances. And the list goes on and on and on and on. So save and manage your finance. Start saving money to cover expenses during the transition period. Create a budget. Pay off debts. Establish an emergency fund. Consider consulting with a financial advisor or accountant. So a couple things on this one. Number one, separate your bank accounts from personal and business and have enough personal savings to pay your personal debts, your business, your, your personal float uh, for, I'd say, a year. You probably want at least one year of personal savings where you don't need to make any money to pay your personal bills and keep that lifestyle about where you have it. I mean, that's going to take years to do. So you can't go right into owning your own business if you're not going to be able to keep your family and their custom the way they're accustomed to being. Now, yes, does there have to be belt tightening? Of course there does. But it's easier said than done, especially it's not fair for you to ask your wife or your, your spouse if you're a woman and you're going and you have a husband and your other, your, your, your partner, whatever it is, and your kids to adjust their lifestyle because you want to make a change. Of course, you can do that. But what if you saved enough money to give them a, a year with just a minimal belt tightening 
and uh, and really make it an easier. You have a lot more support, I think you'll find. And believe me, when you're stressing about all these new things that you've never experienced being a business owner, the last thing you want is a lot of stress at home because bills aren't getting paid or people are spending too much money or a Finances are popping up that you didn't expect, expenses and things like that. So you're going to want a year of personal runway, and you're going to want a year of business runway. So you ask yourself, easy to find out. Um, I love one thing right now. It's, uh, it's Somebody said, act your way. Dina, Dina said, act your wage. It's an accountant joke, all right? How come accountants don't uh, aren't um, ever overspending their budgets or go over their budgets? Because they act their wage. So whatever wage you're making as an employee, you're going to make sure that you live within that boundary and, and save enough money to have a year's worth of bills paid off and a year's worth of your business expenses that you're going to be. Start off small, very small. Those, those expenses should be small. Don't spend money if you don't have it. All right, let's get to number five. Going from employee to entrepreneur is create a business plan. Outline your business goals, targets, target markets, marketing strategies, financial projections, um, operational plans. It goes on and on. A business plan will help you stay focused. I tell you what, this is where a lot of people struggle writing that business plan. Because if you got to go get a loan, if you're going to ask people to invest, if you're going to ask people to join your team, they're going to ask you, what about the business? What does it look like? What are your projections? What's your Profit margin. What are your what taxes are you in? What are you LLC? Are you S corp? You know, and then all the other stuff we talked about. Very few people do a good job at their business plan. So I'm going to share something I normally don't do. I'm going to share a book that I haven't writ, written yet. I'm sorry, written. I <laughs> haven't read yet, but it's it's a brand new book that is written by somebody that I trust, and it's a book. That's brand new, just out on the market. So I guarantee you hardly any of you have read it yet. It's a book written by someone I trust, and it's a book about creating a business plan. And I believe it's five steps to it, and it's really right here. Let me come here to Zoom. Bam. It's called Choose Your Enemies Wisely, and it's written by Patrick Bet David. Okay. Let's see here. Choose Your enemy wisely. Hello. There we go. By Patrick Bet David. This is a new book that is written about how to create a business plan. Again, I have not read this book yet. I bought it. It's coming in the mail, but I trust Patrick Bet David. I trust what he's doing. I trust that he knows What he's talking about, because he's come through for me time and time again. Business Planning for the Audacious Few by Patrick Bet David with Greg Dinkin. Okay, so check this book out about how to write a business plan. And this goes for everyone. Not only, uh, I'm going to put my affiliate link in the description about where to get this. Use my affiliate link if you can, because guess what happens when you do that? I make money, money, money. I make a few dollars off of the purchases that you uh, that you do. And uh, actually, what I could do here is show you how, to, how we're going to do that. Watch this. Bam. Let me get out of here. Watch this. This would be cool. This might be something that you're interested in knowing how to do an affiliate link. Come on, man. Close. The thing I don't want to close. Wow, this stinks because I really want to get this affiliate link out here for you. Why should Patrick make all the money? All right. I'm going to move on because this is getting frustrating and it just won't close. So thanks, Amazon. Thanks for taking. This is the beautiful thing about live streaming, though. This is exactly why I like to do this live streaming stuff because it, it really gives you um, the, the, these things that happen and you got to be ready for them. It's just stuck that I'm so stubborn. I won't move on. I don't care. 
because right here there's a thing called affiliate link, get text. I want to put it in here for you, and damn if it won't let me. Well, I guess it's not happening today, but that's all right. So let's go back to, to, the, to this, and we'll move on, because otherwise I'll be here all day. Um, and it just it grinds my gears that this thing just, just won't shut. I try to help somebody out here, and it won't shut this Amazon thing. It's, oh, boy, that's frustrating. Anyhow, let's close the whole thing down. So I will pull that up later and put that in the description on how to get Patrick Bet David's book using my affiliate link. So creating a business plan, very, very important. Let's go on to a step number four, establishing a strong personal brand. Hold on. I had somebody, a surprise guest that was going to log on. Let me just text. Are you logging on to the Zoom? Question mark. Again, I need another uh, producer here. If I'm looking for a producer, an intern, someone who wants to learn how to produce podcasts, come on, be my intern. So this could be a smoother show. But uh, here's number four. Establish a strong personal brand. So if you're going to be going from employee to entrepreneur, number four is establish a strong personal brand. Building your online presence by creating a professional website, optimizing your social media platforms, creating valuable content related to your industry, establishing strong personal brand will help you gain credibility, attract potential clients or customers. And wouldn't you know, we happen to have people on coaching done better coaches who will help you build your brand, right? Some people that absolutely are great at building people's brand for them on coaching done better. So come on there, join. It's free to join as a member looking for great coaches. And we have actually things in the resource uh, sources in the resource vaults that will help you learn how to build your brand. And we've got some of the best coaches in the world on there that you can see talk, talking about <laughs> it's working uh, on how to build a brand. So we've got our very first guest here coming along here. Let me hit uh, BAM uh, pin. Move this over here. We've got our very first guest. Uh oh. Coming along here. Let me hit uh, BAM uh, pin. Move this over here. I hear a big old echo though. Hold on. Uh -oh. Along here, let me hit uh, BAM uh, right. pin. Move this over here. This is not going to work. A big old echo, though. That's because like, you need your headphones in. Along here, let me hit uh, BAM uh, I'm going to take you out of here for a second. Move this over here. This is not going to work. A big old echo, though. That's because like, you need your headphones in. Along here, let me hit uh, BAM You got to have headphones uh, in. I'm going to take you out of here for a second. Well, there we go. Another first. I had a good show going today. We're really smooth, and now we're having problems, so it's going to mess this up. Let me start this again. If you call in, now we need to tell people they need to have headphones in. <laughs> Can't be on speaker or else I can hear, and that messes everything up. So uh, another step in the learning wheel here, which we love. We love, a, we love another foot forward. So building your brand, again, we have people here at Coaching Done Better that can do that. So let's go to number three, and maybe Christy will find a set of headphones and log in. Not sure uh, if she can. She will. I think uh, we. I know where the. She knows where there's a bunch of them are, uh, so that'll be good. Maybe she can come on. Come on back uh, using that same link. Uh, but let's talk about number three here in going from employee to entrepreneur. Is number three is building a strong professional network. Start attending networks within your industry, attend relevant events, conferences, uh, connect with established entrepreneurs, uh, industry experts, and potential mentors who can offer a guide and support. So, let me tell you about the number one thing that helped my son Garrett Tors business, which is superior lawn and property maintenance. If you need some great landscaping done, Garrett is the best at it. He's been doing it for three years. He's 22 years old. And before he was really hitting it out of the park, uh, he, he was doing okay. We were averaging 100 to 200,000 a year, but we both joined BNI, which is Business Networking International. And that networking group that we joined took Garrett from $100,000 a year, and he started doing $20,000 a month on top of the $100,000 and actually grew 
that company very, very quickly because of the networking strengths that he had built in that networking group, BNI, Business Networking International. We are happen to be the, the warriors, the BNI Business Warriors in South Florida. If you need a good chapter to join, join our chapter. We're looking for people all the time. You can only have one industry, so there can't be other landscapers, but painters and, and uh, chiropractor, or chiropractor we have, but massage therapists, um, business developers. Uh, you know, you, there's so many chapter uh, openings and categories that, that need to be filled. Uh, but Garrett went literally went from doing a hundred thousand to two or three hundred thousand. I mean, this year we're going to do eight hundred thousand dollars this year in landscaping, on our way to a million dollars next year. But a big, big source of that comes from B and I and his network that we did together. Uh, I I joined it and then I um, and then I. Uh, Held his hand a little bit because he's only 20 years old when he joined it. But, man, that kid flowered fast. And I could, I stepped back and just let him b- do it on his own. And he forged his relationship with these network giants. And uh, I tell you, it's really a big deal. So that was number two. Okay, let's try Christy. Oh, we got two people here. We're going to admit, Chris, Christian, if you're on, uh, I need you to have uh, headphones on or earphones. We can't have an open mic. So... Gonna, if you did, just drop off. If you don't have headphones, drop off for me because uh, I, I let you in the room <laughs> before I warned you. Uh, we're going to come back here. So we've got Christy. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you great, and it's working. Oh, nice. I have my headphones in, my AirPods. Yes, look at that. Beautiful. And Christian Lombardi's on here. We have so I, I got a cheat guest, right? Which is my wife, Christy. But now we've got Christian also on here. He's putting on his head, his his cans. We call them in the business. And so uh, let me see if I can pin you too. Add pin. Look at this. It's working. It's like a. It's, it's like a the mad scientist. <laughs> Welcome, Christian. Hey, how you doing? Woohoo! Hi. <laughs> badass, man. I'll tell you what. Um, yes, you are. You know, this is badass, doing all this stuff with you guys and, and uh, working with you guys, having you um, call in and, and join in. So we're talking today about employees to entrepreneurship. What, what have you guys got to, to share with your, some of your experiences? You can Employee. let Christian go first. Oh, that's so kind of you, Christy. Thank you very much. <laughs> my two favorite, you played this game before. My I two play, favorite Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> right on. From entre, from entre, from employee to entrepreneur. Yep, we have the top ten ways to go from employee to entrepreneur. And I'm counting them down. We're at, we're at, we're at, when is, we're so far we're at um, number three, but I've gone through. But uh, I'm sure you've been an employer. You know your story. We're together and and. Uh, uh, speaking professionally, Toastmasters group, and I know that you worked in the oil field for a long time, and now you're on your own, and you're in the uh, communications industry, doing a podcast and becoming a professional speaker, and you yes. specialize in helping people in the oil field um, and, and this thing like that. So, how, what did you find helped you come through that journey from employee to entrepreneurship? Thank you, Jeremy. What a wonderful question. And uh, thank you very much for the platform that you're providing everyone to to come and speak their minds. You know, like most people, obviously, we all follow a certain path. We see a certain path that's in front of us. And we, we follow what we think is the right path. And for me, coming out to West Texas, uh, working in the oil field made the most sense for me personally, obviously. So I did that. And I really got to get into the industry but I really fell more in love with the ethos and with the people. Sometimes the work, not so much because sometimes <laughs> the work is not very fun. Yeah. And you know, Jeremy, sometimes this manual labor and this work is not a lot of fun, but when you work with a crew of people, when you work with a bunch of guys that are dedicated to getting it done, no matter what, yeah. what it takes, because if you don't do it, it doesn't get done. That's right. As it, an entrepreneur. Yeah. It, it really fuels that fire and you can see a lot of people making using their heart kind of like in the Marines, what they say in the seals, it's not the most muscle bound, the ones that make it, it's the ones that have the greatest heart. Yeah. It's something you can't and measure you people. Yeah. 
And you see that here in the oil field as well, where you see men who have reasons for what they're doing. Now, it's not everybody, right? Mm. Like everything else, you're going to have a mix of people. But you have people who are very dedicated and they have a very specific reason for why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. And working in the oil field helps fuel the next stage, the next step in their growth, in their entrepreneurship, yeah. in their business. And this is a, a wonderful place for that. I was actually speaking with someone I'm interviewing for a magazine article today, and we discussed how part of the ethos in West Texas and in Midland is a very much like a wildcatter kind mm. of a mentality. Like if I can get out there and I can drill and if I don't find anything, I'll drill again. Yeah. I'll drill again until I find something. Yeah. I, I will keep going. Yeah. And that is something that is very important both in the oil field and as an entrepreneur, because you always have to be willing to pivot yeah. to find what is it that you're doing that's going to match the market because no one is paying you to have a good time doing what you want to do. You have to provide value to the marketplace. Yeah. Well, I guess the thing is like I'm drilling, drilling, drilling to go, how am I reading these ge geology or what, 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 what you know, uh, scales or prints and what geology, what am I looking at wrong? Because obviously every time I drill, nothing's there. What's different that I can try that might work and in, in baby steps, try changing that ta your tactics. Right. So, right. Uh, and so, yeah, so let me bring Christy on here and, uh, get her, get her say here. Let me add, add pin. I need a, by the way, still need a, still need a, uh, a producer, an intern, someone that doesn't <laughs> want to get paid, but wants to learn the business. I can keep them busy here every day from two 30 to three 30. Right. Right. That's uh, you made a lot of good points, Christian. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. I know for me personally, having been an entrepreneur most of my life, it's always been failure is not an option. You just find Ooh. a way. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's it's just not in my vocabulary. You just know you're going to make it and you're going to do whatever it takes to, yes. to make it. And hopefully make an impact or a change in the industry that you're working in. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really what it's about for me. It's like creating a culture or, you know, a, a, a business where you you've created a great environment for yeah. people and you get some impact by the way and you've done a great job with your camera my lord you know that, that room was tricky i happened to, you did a gr you look great the room looks great the windows yes you look great but christian's also but both of you guys i didn't do anything oh yeah <laughs> you did it's, the, where you are it looks great uh, you sound great uh both of you guys okay. have done a hell of a job with your cameras and stuff uh so let me go back to failures on an option how about yeah. failing may not be an option but sometimes it's an outcome and sometimes it's an inevitable, um, it's just a, it's a, it's a natural conclusion. Sometimes failure is a conclusion and you st yeah, it opens right. to start right. and start on the next iteration of your mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, but people will fail. You run out of money. Oh, yeah. You, you pick um, the wrong no, horse. So yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> there are failures along the way. And but you don't give up. I think that's, that's valuable because yeah. you learn from those failures you almost have to have some failures so that you know. How yes. To Amen. Yeah. But ultimately, as an ultra entrepreneur, I think if you don't have that mindset. Yes. You're going to struggle. Like, yeah. it's just you just have to have that mindset that we're going to make it. We're going to do it. It's not an option. We're yeah. Not bouncing fail. back to yeah. your job, you know, is not going to happen. Yes. Yeah, so you might fail in your business plan, but you're going back yeah, to, but to, to things, your job. Yeah, 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 exactly. You, you learn from them. <laughs> Hopefully, no. I think I think that's absolutely yeah. right. Uh, part of, part of it also is you know what is your definition right of success that you're measuring yeah. to say well what is a failure because yes. you didn't hit some kind of a metric, mm -hmm. and I, I think that this this speaks to business because it also speaks to life where. If you try to hold steady on to something, you're ultimately going to be disappointed because mm -hmm. the nature of life itself is change and everything changes. And the yes. goal that you have today that you think you're going to hit three years from now, one year from now, you may realize that's not really the goal you want. So are mm -hmm. you a failure if you change? Right. No, no. hardly. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about progression. Right. It's about growth towards the goal. How you get there is always changeable. 
So yeah. long as you're making steps towards the goal, that's all that yeah. matters. So, so and, yeah, you're you're right. To, so, just to throw um, out a, a just to throw out a, a, just to throw out a, a, a trivia question and a prize to anyone who can give me the 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 answer to this, <laughs> you get my book, Labor Leadership, autographed, mailed to you. You said, "Hold on tight." Let's say, "Hold on loosely" is sung by Thirty Eight Special, and who is the lead singer's brother? I'm going to put that out there into the ether, and if someone can answer that. Uh, put it in the chat. Who is Can the lead Google? singer of, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, sh I'll ship you my book of, uh, <laughs> of Hold On Loosely by 38 Special. Who is his famous brother uh, of the lead singer? And uh, you'll get my book. So let's put that out there as a trivia. So sorry, back to yeah. you guys. So to, to your point, Christian, you make a good point. It's also just um, enjoying the journey, right? It's, it is a journey. We're never done. We're not finished, you know. We know even if we reach our goal, we set the next goal <laughs> as entrepreneurs, right? It never ends. So it's just, uh, you know, not um, being attached to the expectations and just enjoying the journey and growing, hopefully, along the way, learning a lot along that way, because <laughs> we can't control everything. No, no, we can't. And I think the saying goes, there's only two things that you don't need to worry about. One is the things that you can control. Yes. And two is the things that you can't control. Right. So really, <laughs> what is what is there to worry about? Right? So don't worry about anything. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, yeah. right. and I think, Worrying is a waste of time. There's <laughs> a third thing, though. It's influence. Things that you can influence. Things that you can influence. Especially but these days. I, but that happens. I think you, but you influence through the very momentum of your going through the act of doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So for, for example, um, if I wanna buy a home, and I use this example frequently, I'm a former mortgage banker. If I wanna buy a home, I need to bring basically income, mm -hmm. down payment, and a good credit score. If right. I can do those three things, I will have a, a long litany of professionals who will help me oh, achieve my goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as I can come prepared to the table yes. yeah. and now you're influencing all, <clears throat> all of these people, you influence them with your story. You influence yeah. them with your why, you know what? I know this is a small house. It's not really big, but you know what? It's the best I could mm -hmm. afford that I could use as a rental property. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to start this. And who isn't inspired by that? Who isn't yeah. influenced by that? And when we yeah. all do something like that, well, then we're surrounded by people who are there to support you because we've all done it. That's yeah. that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's being prepared for the opportunity. It's, you know, if you if you have clear cut goals or visions, it's like, what do you need to do to get prepared for that? Yeah, that's part Absolutely. of the journey <laughs> It's finding, yeah. discovering all those things. Yep. Yeah, Without most of it is effort. Most of it is actually just getting out there and yeah. doing it, taking chances. Yeah, it's not going to fall in your lap. Typically, you got to go out and get it and find it. Right. But the universe tends to reward that. Now, yes, you're right. Yeah. Everyone's perspective is different. And, mm -hmm. you know, someone could hit home run. Well, you know, you, we don't even have to come up with um, speculation. I mean, how many people have we seen in the media that have reached a certain pinnacle, what we would think a pinnacle in their lives? and yet destroyed by overdose and drugs or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's there's two different paths, but we're always have to try to, again, be authentic with ourselves and try to grow and not grow ahead of ourselves. That's when things mm. like that take hold yeah. Yeah. Uh, and being yeah, prepared to receive, over. Yeah. to go right to what you said, Christy <clears throat> is to be prepared to re be prepared to receive what you've mm -hmm. been asking for and working towards. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's uh, I've never really believed in luck. It's always been, you know, preparation for the opportunity. And sometimes you're right. prepared for that opportunity. You don't, and you don't recognize the opportunity too. So it's always recognizing the opportunity that's in front of you. Yeah, I had a kid in here. Uh, Sh Shots by Nick. If you go to uh, Instagram, go to Shots by Nick. He's he's 19 years old. He's got 11,000 followers on Instagram. And I said, how'd you get 11,500? 
followers on Instagram. And he said, well, it's the damnedest thing. I, I, I love shooting sports, and I'm down here in Florida shooting some sports. I live in Maryland with my mom, but my dad lives here, and I travel back and forth. And I shoot all of these football games, basketball games, and I have shots by Nick. And I was on ESPN this one time and I, because I caught this, this play where this runner was running, and a, another player hit him in his knees, and he did a complete flip. And he landed on his feet and ran for a touchdown. It was a high school student game. And I was on ESPN. I was on, all over. I went viral, got millions of views. And I got me 10,000 followers. And he says, I was just, I said, how did you get that shot? He said, I was really lucky. And I said, okay, let me stop you right there, Nick, Mr. 19-year-old lucky kid. <laughs> Which number of video was that that you got that shot? And he said, well, of that night? And I said, no, of your journey. When, how old were you when you started and how many games did you record? He said, oh, thousands of games before I got that shot. And I said, luck had nothing to do with it. It was your uh, 2,341st shot that got it. But who would have stayed in it that long at 1,000 followers if that's what you were doing it for? You would have quit a long time ago. So it is mm -hmm. not luck. It's the passion. It's the drive. It's the grit. And it's being in that right place when that opportunity, that's luck. And then you wouldn't have been there if you were doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And I think, uh, like Christian said, it's, uh, you know, it's your why too, because yeah. you have to, you have to pull yourself up every morning and remember that. Why, why are you doing this? You know, and just be the best you can be. Absolutely. <laughs> the other day. You yeah, know? Without a doubt. And I think that in, in a world where, I mean, and again, we have to shorthand and we have to stereotype things to be able mm -hmm. to be discriminating to what we do, such as, so we fall for advertising and marketing and things yeah. like that, because if not, there's no way to navigate the world. Mm -hmm. However, when we begin to have interactions, you know, this is a phrase that we know very well. We tend to do business with people that we know, like, like and trust. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola does not do business with Apple. Uh, John does business with Mary because they've known each other for a while. They travel in the same circles. The kids go to the same school, right. say, right? right. Uh, so when we find people that are really authentic mm -hmm. and not perfect, that's the thing. There's a mistake yeah. too, yeah, right? We have, <laughs> yeah. People think that we're perfect and like, no, I'm just as much as a hot mess as anyone else. <laughs> it's just that I'm willing to admit it and I'm willing to say, try to get better. Things I've done right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So it all, it comes down to relationships too. It's like building those relationships, forming your tribe around you. Yeah. With like minded people. You guys are really knocking out my last three points. Sorry, my last bonus. That's okay. Show. That's good. <laughs> oh, I love it. We got like, three. Who's that guy? Jer Jeremy, what? <laughs> <laughs> to risk, but you risk nothing when you work with me. <laughs> no, it's a great topic. And I think um, it's invaluable because there's a lot of people that want to do, want to be entrepreneurs and they don't know where to start or, understand yeah. what it takes you know um yeah and i think until you actually experience it you don't know what it takes <laughs> like, right you know. what you and guys... if you don't make it as an entrepreneur it doesn't mean that you're a failure you can always go back to your career that's yeah that's what i did as a fallback right we... and i think you're going to be a better person for that <laughs> Going when you go back, a better employee. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have met you if I had yeah, not you gone and the person yeah. that owns the business and is making you know, leaders leaders eat last. So yeah, like, that's great. It's a good book. <laughs> it yeah. is a book. I haven't read that yet, but I like the so I've got, you know, I was an employee and then I started my business, then I lost it, which I covered earlier in this podcast. And the company that I worked for, uh, they they brought you in to cut the executive's hair, and that's how I met you. Because I took that mm -hmm. low-level job at that uh, Saveology, and I rose to the ranks there. But uh, it, that's exactly, you know, humbling yourself and taking that position led to the, my own wife and my my new life and my happiness and and everything. So uh, I'm going to uh, thank you both for joining this and making not only the being the first two guests, uh, but also amazing guests. And um, we're going to get to those last three tips. Yes. But uh, any parting words for the last? For the, the members of the viewers of uh, Let's Get Down to Business. Christian. For me? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Christian. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, just if you are here, then obviously you have a certain kind of a mind that you want to expand and you want to continue to grow. You couldn't be looking, watching, listening, learning from anyone better than Jeremy. And just congratulations on the journey. If you're someone who knows what you want and you're taking steps to get it, 
you're already successful. So thank you very much, Jeremy. Absolutely. Come and join me on Coaching Done Better. That's how you get a hold of me. And uh, yeah, thank you, Christian. Thanks for calling in and uh, jumping on the Zoom line. I'm glad it works. How did you get it? Did you get it through uh, YouTube or through? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Great. Thanks. Take care, brother. Thank Ciao. you. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye, Christy. Bye. All right, Christy, Bye. you have any parting words? Uh, he pretty much said it all. You know, it's yep. it's the... Uh, it's challenging to be an entrepreneur, but if you believe in what you do and think you can do a better job at whatever industry you're in and you are, you know, you've got your skills and you've got a nest egg, try it. Yeah, try it. Jump in, do it. Well, let's Just go see, let's go see what these last three uh tips are. We'll see if we can uh, you know, get uh if any of these two, oh man, I'm all over the place here. Hold on. See, I need a, uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, let's go back over here to, oh, you know what I got to do? I got to take, uh, go here and let me see. I might not know how to do this. I might have to tell you guys to, to hang up. Well, and I have to, I actually have to go. So yeah. I have something to park <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Out. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Thank y'all. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. All right. So Christy, we'll, uh, I'll see you when I get home and later. Thanks for, right. thanks for calling in <laughs> so I can get to these top three and Let's share go. it. All right. Let's see. Yeah. So just exit out. I'm trying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where, okay. I can do it. Remove, remove. Yeah. You. Take me out. Cause it, <laughs> Don't report. Okay, so now, yeah, there we go. We get back into uh, number three, which is build. At, so we covered number three. We're down to the last two. So that was really cool, Christy and Christian uh, jumping on here, and it was great. Uh, thank you for that. And I, by the way, I saw Kathy Calloway too. So let me give you a nice welcome, Kathy Calloway. Thanks for watching your car in uh, Delaware in the cold Delaware weather there. So thanks for that. Let's get to number two and see if uh, the, the last two were covered by Christian and Christy, who were great enough to join us on Zoom and joined us live on air. Uh, number two is develop a market strategy and sales strategy, identifying your target audience, the best channels to reach them, and create a marketing plan. A uh, sales strategy that includes lead gen, nurturing prospects, and closing deals. Um, again, learning how to do something you want to do is one thing, Learning how to sell is another thing. And so over my shoulder, this the original sales funnel, not click funnels, but the original sales funnel helped out so much on teaching me how to not just sell, but how to read people, how to talk to people the way they want to be spoken to and with, and how to ask smarter questions, how to create deficit. Uh, and you could learn a lot of things from the original sales funnel on Coaching done better. We have so much information on how to sell. So just because you're a great operator, when you open up your own business, you better learn how to sell and you should learn how to talk to people the way they want to be spoken with. And we get in real deep into DISC and uh, that's written by Ray Leon, um, who's in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and spent 40 years developing this, uh, this the original sales funnel. His son, Tony Leone, is a trainer for him. They, they work with DuPont. I'm sorry, uh, not DuPont. They work with, uh, 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 what is that company that's in, um, I don't know. It's in North Carolina, the power company that's in North Carolina, whatever the name of that. I, it slipped my mind right now, but that's fine. Um, but Tony Leone and uh, Ray Leone, Ray created Sales Funnel. But that's exactly how I learned recently in the last year or so how to really connect with people on their level. And, uh, and really get into their, uh, to, to creating deficit by asking smarter questions. So I want to thank you, Ray, for teaching me how to be a sales master. Uh, and, and that's by, by working with the sales funnel, the original sales funnel that's over my shoulder right there. Uh, pick up that book, get to coachingdonebetter.com, join as a member, and you can see some of the stuff that I have on there regarding sales funnel and how you can become great at sales so you can develop that marketing and sales strategy that will guarantee your success or at least go a lot further 
of guaranteed your success when you become an employee, becoming an, an entrepreneur. So drum roll, number one thing that must be done if you want to go from employee to entrepreneur is take the leap. You've got to put yourself out there. You got to have sufficient savings, validate the business idea, have a plan in place, really brings it all together, but actually do it. My last name is spelt to risk, but I've literally, I couldn't be stopped. If I get something in my head, I want to do it. I do it. I take that leap. I act at the speed of instruction, but save that money. You want to save the money? Do it. You want to pay off debt? Do it. You want to be serious about like losing weight and building muscle? You just do it. You eat less. You work out more. It's very easy. It's very easy to save money. Use a Dave Ramsey uh, baby steps, snowball way to pay off debt. Save money for your business. Leave your company. Start your own company. Stop working for people, making them legacy money for their family for generations to come and do it for yourself. Just do it. Don't be like Nike's lazy cousin, just do it later. Be like Nike and just do it. Uh, so there's, we covered the top 10 ways of what to do so that you can do it. We've had some great callers of Christy and Kristen Lombardi. Christy Torres joined us today. As normal, when I do this, I give you guys a bonus tip. And that is, uh, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the networking stuff and making relationships. As Steve Nudelberg says, ROR. Forget about ROI, do ROR, return on relationships. Go out there and get you a mentor, someone who is successful at the very thing you want to do, do and then ask them to mentor you. Christy and, and Christian were talking earlier about the relationships and getting to know people and asking people who've done it what they did. Most importantly, you get to, to, to miss out on all the problems that they faced while they were learning and doing how to how to get done what you want to do. So definitely use that that wisdom and that knowledge, uh, and, and remember very very clearly that the transitioning from employee to entrepreneur takes time, effort, persist, persistence, grit, drive, passion, and clarity. Time, effort, persistence, grit, drive, passion, and clarity. Be prepared to face obstacles along the way. Always keep learning and adopting in those new circumstances. I'm Jeremy Torres. We come from you live from the Done Better studio here in Pompano Beach, Florida. I want to thank you. Thank Christy. Thank uh, Christian who came on today and, uh, and contributed to the show via Zoom. You could do that anytime. Just go to wherever you see this live. Go to the body and click on that Zoom link and you can come on live. Uh, my name is Jeremy Torres. I'll be back here Monday with a brand new show. And Christy Torres will be here with me as my guest. We'll see you Monday because we don't do this show on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. But we'll be here Monday through Thursday next week. It'd be a great week because it's the last week of the year. And we're not stopping. Can't stop, won't stop. We are getting down to business even the last week of the year. It's the critical that you go do everything you can to put, set yourself up for a positive 2024. That means putting the work in next week if you're behind. If you're not where you want to be, you better be grinding. And I'll help you do that. Go to coachingdonebetter.com. Get yourself on my schedule. And I will help you meet your goals. Or a coach on there, some coach that you want to get better at your mind, body, or business will help you do that. Well, right now, let's get back at it. Let's get down to business. It's time to get 1% better today. Thanks for joining us.